by an indie author? Well, there's quite a few different reasons why. Um, an indie author, it feels a bit daunting sometimes to be an indie author because not only are you writing the story, but you're trying to find the money to pay professionals to help you with cover design and editing and proofreading. Um, you have to find your own beta readers. You have to find your own advanced readers for ARCs. Um, and you have to be willing to either pay someone to do the formatting or format and publish your books yourself. There are so many decisions to make when it comes to publishing a book. You may or may not decide to buy your own ISBNs. So there's quite a bit of expense, upfront expense, in becoming in being an indie author. You then, once the book is published, or <laughs> Leading up to it being published, you have to start marketing and promoting, which is pretty tough. It's it's the tough part for me. But I'd still rather be indie than traditionally published, and I'll tell you why. I did actually start my author career um, as a traditionally published author of um, non-fiction books ideas, practical ideas for teachers in the early years in the UK. And for 15 years, I wrote articles for a magazine on this same subject. And it was reasonably lucrative, but I really wanted to be a fiction author. And I thought about the traditional publishing route. I looked into agents, I looked into the process. And then I thought, do I really want another job where somebody else is my boss? Now, I've been in jobs and had bosses. I haven't been that impressed. And I have my own little business, online business, and I actually prefer being self-employed. So that was one big reason for becoming indie, is to be self-employed, not to have someone telling you that you have to change uh, big parts of your story, not, not because it makes it a better story, but because the publishers think it fits with their style of books that they like to sell and it'll make money for them. And that's a big point too. When you traditionally publish, the percentage you get of your book price is tiny. Um, I used to get between, I think, 5 and 8%. Being indie, I can get 80%. Um, I know I have to pay for um, cover design and all that that I talked about. But I get more per book than I would being traditionally published. Um there's there's issues like not being able to choose who makes your book cover for you because if you're traditionally published the publisher has the, they have their own designers and quite often they'll change the title of your story and i don't know that feels like they're taking away so much of what belongs to you what's important to you about the story. Maybe the title is a better title, maybe it's just fitting um, a set type that they like, but not only do you not have a choice of the cover design, but you also don't own the cover design. Now I own my cover designs and if I wanted to make merchandise with the cover or part of the cover design on it, I can, but as a traditionally published author, you can't. And this is where the marketing side comes in. Now, people think, oh, it's fantastic, go traditionally published and you don't have to worry about marketing your book. Well, that's not true anymore. And a lot of publishers or even agents won't take you on unless you've got a huge social media following and they've seen that you are capable of doing promotion and marketing yourself. 
they will do the initial little push and yes your book will be on a list that's sent out to bookshops but it's up to you to find the readers it's up to you to do the same work that an indie does so that's trying to get to book fairs that's perhaps going and doing talks in schools or in libraries or linking with a book club it's doing videos and um promos on different sites things like uh, bookbub for example it's it's the same whether you're traditionally published or indie published you still need to do all that marketing but for indie it's perhaps a little easier if you can merchandise if you can offer your readers something for free even if it's just a mug with your main character on because you own the rights to your book, every part of your book, you can use the cover. Uh, you can't choose, if you're, in, if you're traditionally published, you can't choose when your book is published. As an indie author, you can publish whenever and as often as you like. And a slight drawback is that someone like me, I'm used to working to deadlines, quite like working to deadlines. Making your own deadlines is a little bit trickier, but I'm getting used to it. And I do have goals in mind for when I publish my next book, when I want to publish my next book. And it will quite often give me uh, the incentive to get on with it <laughs> when I know that, that date is coming closer. So you have a lot more freedom. You have a lot more choice as an indie author. It isn't easy. <laughs> not by any means but it is part of being an author now uh, it's part of the process and uh, well I like the fact that being an indie I can choose who I pay to do the work that needs doing on my manuscripts and on my story. I like the idea that I'm supporting another independent uh, person, an editor, who isn't part of a big company. And of course, a lot of the tra traditional publishing houses are huge because they've amalgamated. And yes, there are a lot of small publishing companies too, but they don't have the same clout and you're probably going to have to do more marketing um, if you're with a smaller um, publishing company. So that's why, that's why I am indie and I'm going to stay indie. I don't want to have another job with a boss. I do like the freedom of choice. I like the control of what's happening to my physical book once it's been made. Um, I don't know about you. And I'm and I'm proud about I'm proud that I'm an indie author. I'm proud to be part of this growing community. If you have any questions, um, please leave a comment and uh, I'll try and reply as soon as possible.